I've returned to the Apple Watch and there's a problem, quite a big problem. Some of you might remember that I did this walk about two years ago when I first got the Apple Watch Ultra and a lot has changed since then including how wet everything is. <laughs> I'll do anything for a YouTube video, but I'm not convinced that's worth it. Okay, so two years ago, Apple introduced the Apple Watch Ultra and I jumped on it straight away. I had the Apple Watch One. I was one of those people, yet yeah, one of them, who bought the very first Apple Watch and I've really enjoyed it ever since. It's been something that's been on my wrist for a long time, since 2015. However, since about January this year, I've been wearing different watches. And that's given me a completely different perspective of the Apple Watch. Now we have the Apple Watch Series 10, which I've been wearing since the 20th of September when it was delivered to my door. And there's one huge problem and there's one saving grace. So let's get into it. Just a quick word about this channel. 87% of people who watched the channel this year aren't subscribed and the more subscribers I have the more of these videos I can do the more new tech I can get in front of you and the more cool stuff we can do together kind of together you get the point but if you haven't hit subscribe yet you know what to do let's go through those other watches that I've used this year so the first one and the one that spent the most amount of time on my wrist is the Garmin Mark Commander which I know I've promised to review and it will feature on the channel at some point, I promise. But that is a kind of military inspired Garmin watch, which has epic battery life, as you might expect, amazing build quality. It is about 2,600 quid. It's a lot of money. And there was a big bug with it, certainly in the version that I've, I've been using, which made it freeze occasionally. So you'd look at the time and the time would have been from three hours ago. For a military focused watch, not great, but that didn't happen very often. And it's just a lovely, lovely timepiece. Then we had the Huawei Watch Fit 3, which looks like an Apple Watch. There's no getting away from it. It's probably the nearest thing to an Apple Watch that I've actually used, but it costs 139 quid and it has 10 days of battery life. 10 days, absolutely bonkers. And it does everything pretty much that an Apple Watch does, which, I couldn't get my head around that. 139 quid, 10 days of battery life. Then we had the OnePlus Watch 2R, which was my first experience of a OnePlus wearable. And again, a lovely watch, loads more battery life than the Apple Watch, a circular face, just like the Garmin Mark Commander. Looks really nice. You can use it pretty much anywhere. So unlike the Apple Watch, it's a sort of watch that you can wear to work out, but also take out if you're going out for dinner or that sort of stuff. I've always struggled with that with the Apple Watch in terms of it looking dressy, if you like. Not that I do many dressy things, but you know, the, you get my point. The Watch 2R is a very, very good option. And again, a bit cheaper than the Apple Watch. Then we had two more watches from Huawei, the Watch GT5 Pro and the Watch Ultimate, both of which I absolutely loved. Again, circular design, beautiful construction and the, just the look and feel of them is absolutely lovely, right up my street and loads of battery life again, days and days of battery life. And the challenge Apple has with me now is that all of those watches have caused a bit of a problem for the Apple Watch Series 10 because I didn't miss the Apple Watch at all, really. I, I, I genuinely didn't. So when this arrived, it needed to perform. So a lot of people were expecting quite a big update from the 10th generation Apple Watch. And I've picked out a few of the things that Apple did. So it's the lightest and thinnest Apple Watch ever. It's 9.7 millimeters, which is 10% thinner than the Series 9. It's got the first ever wide angled wide angle OLED display. No one seems to know what that means, but it does mean that it's 40% brighter when viewed at an angle, which makes sense, I suppose. And that's true. Looking at it, I mean, it's not, it's not sunlight out here. It's an overcast British morning, but it's very viewable from all angles. So we'll give them that, that makes perfect sense. It's got more rounded corners. It's got a wider aspect ratio, 2000 nits of brightness, which in these conditions, again, don't make a huge difference, but when it's very sunny, I have used this when it's been very sunny, believe it or not you can see it very well. So it's got kind of almost Apple Watch Ultra brightness levels and the display is 
of ultra quality as well. But what do those design changes mean? So when I first got the Apple Watch on my wrist, again, after you know, several months of not wearing one, I was a bit disappointed because I was so used to those other watches that I've just mentioned, particularly the Huawei GT5 Pro and the Watch Ultimate. They're such lovely watches and they're right up my street. This is a very subjective thing, by the way. You may not agree with this, but for me, circular watches. Oh, I didn't even mention the, the Galaxy Watch Ultra. Yeah, Samsung's version of the Apple Watch Ultra, which looks nothing like the Apple Watch Ultra, by the way. I love the design of that thing. It's big, chunky, looks purposeful. And having gone from watches like that, to this felt like a bit of a downgrade. However, the more I wear it, the more I'm getting used to it and getting back into the Apple Watch thing. And I do like this jet black aluminium version. This is their first ever polished aluminium Apple Watch. And I think it looks really nice. The other thing that's great is the fact that it is thinner, which again, isn't my preferred thing, but because it's thinner, they've moved the lugs where the strap attaches to the watch. And that basically means that the watch sits much closer to your skin. My podcast co-host Rob discovered this. It wasn't, my, wasn't myself, but as soon as he mentioned that, I looked at it and thought, yeah, it doesn't kind of bulge out of your arm anymore like it used to. The more I wear it, I'm, I'm getting there. It's, it's like that mate that you were really big mates with in the past and then something happened you fell out of touch and then you spent about a year apart and there's always that kind of awkward silence between you so you decide to go out for a drink and that first drink you have with that mate is a bit awkward there's a very kind of you know orcs handshake and then you're kind of fumbling around wondering what to say and then within 10-15 minutes you're getting on like a house on fire i'm not getting on like a house on fire with the apple watch series 10 just yet but there's something happening we're on that first beer i hope this makes sense Okay, performance. So Apple spent not a huge amount of time at the iPhone 16 event where the Series 10 was launched talking about the new S10 SIP, the chip basically in the Apple Watch Series 10. And they didn't really talk about performance, which was interesting. Instead, they talked about machine learning, AI, etc. The problem with that is that I can't really talk about that at the moment because, well, we don't have Apple intelligence yet and there's no real indication of how Apple intelligence is going to play with the Apple Watch, or even if it will. I, I have a feeling we're gonna have a kind of amalgamation between the new Apple intelligence stuff and the terrible Siri that we get on the Apple Watch, which is a weird place to be. Now, the other performance related thing is battery life, and this is the big problem for me. So again, going back to those watches that I've been trying this year, they've all got incredible battery life, days and days you know so i've got used to not charging my watch that often so to come back basically to the apple watch where you have to charge it every day you really do they still say 18 hours of battery life which means they expect you to charge it overnight or i guess quickly when you're having a shower or whatever and it does charge quickly which is nice but if you want to do sleep tracking you've got to keep it on overnight and for me having to keep charging it throughout the day well once a day at least is just really annoying I've got so used to watches that don't need that. So this country walk has very rapidly turned into a walking around the streets of where I live. Apologies. Thankfully for Apple, there is one saving grace with the Series 10, which I'll get to in a moment. But first, it's worth mentioning some of the new stuff they've put into it because it's quite impressive. So there's now a depth gauge. So if you're into diving of any kind, although probably not the extreme diving, but if you do some diving and you want to have a diving computer on your wrist, you don't have to get the Apple Watch Ultra anymore. That's very nice. There's also sleep apnea detection. So if you suspect you might have that or your partner has been badgering you for the last couple of years to get it checked out. It can't detect it and say you've definitely got it, but it can use its sensors and some other very clever stuff to give you an indication that you might have it and that you need to perhaps go and have a chat with your doctor. You can now play music through the speaker, which doesn't sound fantastic, obviously, but it's not bad. And I just, I would recommend that everyone doesn't do it. Like, you know, people, you know, you, know, you see people walking down the street with their phones playing music. At them. Don't do that. And there's a new Translate app, which I haven't tried yet, but it's nice to know that you've got that kind of thing on your wrist if you're traveling. And now onto the obvious savior for Apple, the ecosystem. 
I knew you could see this coming a mile off and I know some of you will, will immediately be typing that I'm a fanboy in the comments and you know calling me out for just being weak and all that sort of stuff but there's no getting away from the fact that Apple has in my opinion the best ecosystem the best example of this and the simplest way to put it really is that whenever I look at my watch it gives me information that I expect either based on what I'm doing or more importantly what's happening on my phone. It unlocks my Mac without me thinking about it. It authenticates stuff on the Mac. It can act as a brilliant Apple TV remote. The list goes on and on and on. It just works. And yes, as fanboyish as that might make me sound and as weak as I probably am for giving in on the battery life stuff just because of the ecosystem, I'm afraid it's true. And any of you who are watching this who are in the Apple walled garden, no matter what you think of it, if you're happy about that or not happy about it, you can't deny that it's true. The Apple Watch, paired with the iPhone is the best combination of its kind. The good thing is it does make the buying guidance for this very simple. If you're an Apple person and if you need a new Apple Watch or you just want to get an Apple Watch for the first time, the Apple Watch Series 10 is fantastic and you won't regret it. If however, you're not that wedded to Apple and you still have an iPhone, you know, you're an iPhone person, but you want to look around and see what else there is, please watch my, I'm not, I'm not just saying this because they're my videos and I want to keep you on this channel for as long as possible, but please watch my reviews of the Huawei stuff, even the watch ultra from Samsung, although that doesn't have the best battery life. It's a more interesting watch. It, it looks better, I think, than the Apple watch and definitely the Garmin stuff just shop around a bit. As always guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It makes a massive difference to this channel. And if you fancy some more Apple content, keep watching for a link.